All right, everybody, hail and welcome to today's episode of Midgard Musings. Thank you so much for, for joining me today. Uh, my name is Jesse, and I'm the host here on this channel. I upload content here that covers Norse heathenry and other Norse heathenry related type things. Uh, so if that's kind of your thing and if it's what you're into, uh, please subscribe to the channel right here. And if you don't want to miss anything, make sure you click the bell notification so that way you're alerted every time I upload new content. Uh, so today's uh, episode is episode 8 of the 9 Pieces of 8 series, which has been a continuation of uh, sort of a crash course surface of the uh, scratching uh, study of the runes, right? Um, there's going to be a total of 9 episodes uh, that complete the series, which means after today we've got just one more episode to complete. And uh, today we're going to be talking about Ewas, Manas, and Lagus. So again, thank you for tuning in and watching. As is customary and as tradition, we like to light some incense and light a candle here. And so we'll go ahead and get that going and then get into the uh, discussion for today. So if you haven't already, make sure that you've uh, checked out all the other videos on the playlist section of the nine pieces of eight. Kind of get you up to speed on things and let you know uh, kind of just how I see the runes, how I perceive and then translate the runes. Uh, for sure, I, I always like to say this in these videos, I, this is never intended to be something that is, you know, canon or, you know, what I say is the only way, of course, because there is so much about the runes that we all learn uh, in our various practices that um, some people are going to pick up on things uh, at different times, other people are going to pick up on different things at different times. So they're very organic in their nature, they're very, uh, you know, the, how they work with you are going to be different than maybe how they work with me, and of course, the runes, the meanings themselves, um, are, are open for interpretation, and there's a lot to them, so keep that in mind as you're watching these series, and as you're learning the runes yourself, that you may find things that you are, uh, that you haven't heard of before, that you might discover on your own, and if you have, and you want to share, I encourage everybody that's watching to go ahead and drop comments down below on, uh, on what you are learning about the runes as, as you're pursuing that path. All right, so um, today, like I said, the first rune of the day is going to be Ewas. Um, got Facebook Live going here, so everybody that watches live on Facebook is looks like the letter English or Latin letter M. All right, and there's for you too. Ewas, uh, it's kind of the soft E sound, um, kind of like an echo. Uh, as it is in the word echo, um, and uh, it is a rune that literally would could be translated to the, the, the root word or the old Proto-Germanic word as meaning horse, um, and it has its esoteric kind of properties um, surround that of trust, um, the, 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 the kind of the union between a horse and a rider, or a horse and a person operating like let's say a horse on a team uh, for plowing the lands or for pulling a cart or a carriage or, or that, that sort of thing. Um, it, and it's, it's definitely something that, uh, when I say like uh, trust, meaning teamwork, there's that harmonious teamwork. Everybody's working together for uh, the same end goals, right? We're working together to sort of uh, meet a common goal. Um, so it's definitely a rune of pairs, you know, it's, it's quite often uh, linked to uh, two people working together, you know, um, the, the, the forward motion, the steady progress, there's, there's definitely, there's strength, and there's that sort of energy within that rune, so it's definitely a rune of motion, of forward motion, of steady motion, um, and of working together, nobody's pulling a load more so than the other, and if one gets, you know, if one is struggling, the other helps. Um, so there's that constant uh, teamwork aspect uh, that is contained within uh, Ewas, right? Um, Manas is the next rune, and Manas, which if you've been watching Midgard Musings for any length of time, or even if it's your first time watching today, you will notice that the logo for Midgard Musings is a sort of a combination of two Manas runes, right? what we would call a bind rune. I've done a video a little bit about bind runes in the past. You can check the top right cor corner of the screen for an annotated card where I talk a little bit about what bind runes are. 
Um, but manas, and this is, again, this is the, uh, the letter M sound, it creates the sound of, you know, uh, the common letter M, so it's in man, mankind. That is what we're looking at, <coughs> excuse me, that is what we're looking at within the powers of this room, the manas. It is literally mankind or man, um, humankind, humanity. Um, it, it's kind of a, one of those rooms of, uh, you know, the, the, the divine structure of our intelligence and in, in our human souls, in our, in our human psyche, okay? It is a rune of kind of like the, the, the horizons uh, of, of human existence, if you will. Um, social order, things of that nature. It, it's quite often associated with the god Heimdall, um, given the fact that he's uh, attested to in the uh, Poetic Edda as being, uh, in his form of Greg, uh, as being sort of the sire of all races of man. And when I say races, I don't mean like, you know, whatever, or classes of man is probably the better term because we have the thralls, we have the middle class, we have the nobility. Um, and, and Heimdall, as is, is, is Greg, is uh, attested to have been the sire or father of all those classes of mankind, right? So it makes sense that it's, uh, you know, definitely uh, something to look at as a, as a rune that helps us to realize our human potential, no matter who we are, no matter what class we come from, you know, whether we're the working class, the middle class, what have you, no matter what our backgrounds are, there's, there's that realization of our, our own human potential, there's that balance and harmony that needs to take place um, when we encounter people, uh, our communities around us, um, and that's a, a lot why, you know, of course, Midgard Musings is a, the word as a double M, uh, the, 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 the name of Midgard Musings being a double M. Um, it, it's kind of neat to me that it works so well for the runes to, to be bound in that way, uh, to strengthen the, uh, the sense of humanity and finding that balance. And then what we try to do here, you know, through reaching out and educating and, and learning together, uh, with heathens all around the world, people who maybe are new to this, uh, people who are actively pursuing their practices in heathenry, you know, we're all kind of uh, working this path of, uh, in our own separate ways, but in, in, in a sense, we're, we're connecting to one another uh, through the commonality there. So there's one of my favorite runes of the Elder Fulark is Manas, and it's for those reasons uh, that I just stated. That's what I see as, as being some of the most powerful parts of that rune, okay? Um, the final rune of the day will be Lagus. This is a, uh, kind of almost looks like the number one uh, without the, without like the foot or whatever at the bottom of it. Um, but it does represent the L sound, as in lake, all right? And uh, Lagus is water, all right? It's, it's, it's a rune of, of fluidity. Um, the representation of, you know, lakes, waterways, waterfalls, the ocean, any kind of body of water, the seas, you know. Um, we can also see that it has some esoteric parts of uh, the unconscious or collective memory. You know, it's almost like when you, when you look into the water, you, what you see is a reflection. It's, it's retaining what what the original source of that image is, it's retaining that, so there's a memory contained in the water. Um, it's definitely a rune of, uh, some people will, will, will sometimes say that it's a rune of negativity, um, because, you know, there's, there's, there's no way to control water, you know, so there may be things going on uh, that are out of your control, and that you just kind of have to go with the flow of things at that point, and I look at it um, I, I think I, I think all the runes, in their own respective way, can have some negative connotations, uh, depending on what other runes um, develop around it in the casting um, or when during you know, divination. Um, but I always initially look at Lagus as, as being somewhat of a rune of uninterrupted movement. Uh, there, it's, it's not a time to stagnate, it's not a time to stop, it's not a time to pause, you kind of just have to ride the waves, the waves are going, the fluid 
motions of the tides, you know, the ebb and the flow of things, uh, it happens. It, 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 there's nothing that we can do to kind of control or, or re reject that, so we just kind of have to learn to, to ride it. And that can be a good thing, um, that necessary motion, um, riding those waves of life. Um, sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down, sometimes it's in, sometimes it's out. You know, so there's, there's that evolutionary process. Um, that, that, that context of becoming something as as it flows and as it moves, you know. Um, so like I get like again again like I said, there's there's so much to the runes. We're basically just scratching the surface in this series. Um, next week, uh, the final episode, we're gonna talk about the last three runes, um, which are Inglas, Dagas, and Othala. And during that episode, I will also be sort of showing you guys. Um, just an example of what I do for when I if I were to do a casting, okay? Uh, so you you guys will get to see just a uh, a little bit of a glimpse if you're looking to pursue working with the runes as, as a divination sort of thing. You'll see one heathen's uh, approach to it, and, and even then, it's not always the way I, I approach it. I, I may do different things at different times depending on the needs of the person who I'm working with. Um, or, or what exactly I'm working the, you know, with the runes for. Um, but that'll be in next week's episode. It'll be, the, it'll be wrapping up the series, so I hope you guys will come back and watch that episode. Um, this is the conclusion of today's episode. I'm anxious to hear what all of you think. Uh, so if you don't mind, go ahead and leave your comments down below in the comments section. In the description of the video, you'll see all ways that you can support Midgard Musings. There's a tip jar donate for donations since I do these videos for free um, and it helps support the channel and keeps me doing what I do here every week and then there's also Teespring store for merchandise there's Redbubble store for merchandise um, and then I do rune sets and, and wood burnings like that for runes that if you want to get a rune set made I will be happy to uh, you know do a commission piece for you and the purchase of those rune sets also helps support Midgard Music monetarily speaking all right so anyways, guys and gals, thank you so much for watching. I also want to do a quick shout out to all the dads out here that are watching today because it is Father's Day. Uh, so hail to the men out here doing the dad thing. We appreciate you and uh, we couldn't do it. You know, Families wouldn't be the same without those father figures um, providing for our family. So hail to the fathers out there and hail to our uh, male ancestors, our alpha uh, ancestors, right? So thank you all again so much for watching. Everybody that's watching live on Facebook, please stick around so I can get to answering your comments and questions. Everybody that's watched on YouTube, thank you again for your support. Don't forget to please subscribe to the channel. Ding the bell for notifications so you don't miss anything. Hail, and I will see you all next time.